that you told yourself that you're going to take a break. Actually, two years is not even a break. It's a sabbatical. And you decided to reset your acting goals. Now, I was speaking to Anil Kapoor recently, and he told me that there was one point in his career when he wanted to take a break, or a sabbatical as it were, and your father, Amitabh Bachchan, is the person who he approached. I think they were working in a film together. Yeah. And he immediately told him, never ever do that. Keep working. You had the same man in your house. Did he not give you the same advice? Firstly, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And um, thank you. Oh. That feels good. See, you shouldn't have taken that self-imposed hiatus. Um, you know, Mayank, when I decided um, that I needed to take this uh, sabbatical, um, I was very convinced that this is what I needed to do for myself, for my career. And um, the decision had been made. I mean, obviously, normal table conversation, um, I did tell my family that this is what I was planning to do. And um, my father, he did respond with a similar, I mean, I don't think he was as emphatic as he would have been with Anil. Mm. But he said, look, you know, I did this and it's the biggest mistake I made in my career. Right. And um, are you sure you want to do this? And I mean, it's your call, but mm. he gave me his opinion. I think times were different when he did it. In 1992, if I'm not mistaken, when my father finished shooting Khuda Gawa, he decided for uh, various reasons that he wanted to... Which was a great film, by the way. It was, yes. Yeah. That he wanted to take a break. And um, after five, six years, he was kind of coerced into coming back. In those days, uh, when he came back, he felt he had lost touch with what the audience wanted. Also, in that interim period, there was an entire new generation that had come into watching movies. But more importantly, there was an entire new generation that was making movies. Mm. The likes of Suraj Barjatia and Aditya Chopra had come in and and left their stamp and changed Indian cinema uh, and how the audiences wanted to view cinema, what kind of heroes they wanted. Suddenly from the angry young man, it became the romantic NRI hero. So when my dad came back, he felt that, oh my God, I'm still doing the kind of films that I was doing in the late 80s, early 90s, and that wasn't working. That was why he felt it was a mistake. He felt he lost touch. I was very aware of this, because mm -hmm. obviously having you know, lived through that phase with him. But when I decided, I think times have changed, there's a lot more information, you're a lot more accessible. Um, and plus, I wasn't planning to you know, go off into the mountains and just right. vegetate for like two years. I was uh, very sure of how I wanted to um, execute this plan of mine. In fact, taking the break and uh, stopping making films was actually the first step of the plan. Mm. It was the first step of the execution of the plan. This is something I've been thinking of for the last four or five years. Mm. All my friends are from the film industry. The people I socialize with on a normal basis are from, in some way, the film industry or the media. So I think, um, and today you have social media as well, um, and I think it's very easy to keep abreast of what's going on, what kind of films are being made. So I wasn't really removing myself from sure. this world. So I was very sure of that I'm, I'm not going to lose touch. But more importantly, it was a very personal decision where I felt I just, I just needed to recalibrate how I was working. It right. wasn't the kind of work I was doing. It's how I was doing the work. Mm. And I was very confident in the kind of actor I hoped to come back as. I had more confidence in that actor than I did in the doubt of, oh my God, am I going to lose touch? You know, out of sight, out of mind. Um, you know, are you going to be left behind? All these kind of things. So I was more confident on the person that I aimed to become. And I think that's the difference between my dad's time and, and my time. Yeah. Right. I mean, one of the words to describe a summit, perhaps, if you were to translate in Hindi, would be a manthan, right? Self-introspection. And that's precisely what you did. Uh, what was the conclusion from that self-introspection? Not that you went to the Himalayas. You were obviously working. You were, you were doing various things at the same time. But what is it that you learned because you took a step back to be able to see a larger picture? It kind of just emanated from a place where I just felt I'd become very complacent in mm. my professional attitude. It's a bit of an irony. You know, we spend, I, I'm, I'm sure in most fields, but 
in cinema, you, you, you work hard to attain a certain level of material comfort as well. Mm. I mean, let's all be honest with ourselves. You know, that is a big part of our lives. And once you attain that comfort, um, then you just start coasting along with it. What happened with me professionally is I was in a phase where I was making some very successful films. Mm. I was getting paid some very good money. I had no pressure to deliver a hit because that was on a fellow actor of mine. Mm. I, was, I was in a very comfortable, happy space. I was working with some of my dearest friends, having a mm. great time making You mean movies. Happy New Year, Houseful 3? Yeah, all right, these right, kind of films, right. you know. Um, and what happens is once it works, then you do another one because you mm. know it works. Then you do the third one saying, this is really easy. Mm. Life isn't meant to be easy, especially films. Mm. Filmmaking is definitely not meant to be easy. Mm. As, a, as a creative person, as an actor, especially today, it's very important to be uncomfortable. It's very important to be challenged on a daily basis. Mm. When you, you know, can sleep peacefully and wake up and say, yeah, I can do this with my eyes shut and I can just coast along, it's a great space to be in. Right. I, I'm not going to you know, lie to you. But what happens is I realize that if I carry on like this, what I'm bringing to the table in terms of a film or a project is going to keep depleting film by film because mm. I'm not contributing anything. I'm just there. I'm having a blast. Getting paid well. I'm getting paid well, and the films are becoming, you know, 200, 300 crore right. films. But if I'm going to stop contributing to my project, in two, three films' times, my producers are going to say, hey, why do I need him? I'll take somebody else. Mm. So you become disposable. I wanted to stop before I reached that stage. Mm. I said, no, you need to stop. You need to take a step back and just recalibrate, like I say, sure. re-energize, come back with a lot more focus, and come back with a plan. You know what had happened with me, my uncle, I, I've known you for so many years, and uh, I mean, I'm sure there are people here who have met, I mean, Jyoti's here. Jyoti's known me since I was a kid. You know, people don't believe it, but even though I'm, I'm born and brought up in this film industry, and this film industry is my life, it, it genuinely mm. is. Making movies is something that I am most passionate about. Mm. I love the film industry. I love making films. I love watching films. It's, mm. it's my world. Now, what happens is, when I got the opportunity to become an actor, mm. um, and I say I got the opportunity because another thing people don't believe is right. I was going to ask you that question at some point. It wasn't easy right. comings for me in, in that sense. Mm. You know, everybody would have thought being Mr. Bachchan's son, there was a line of producers. No, so did you did you make that shit up that you actually went for two years from one producer director's office to the other because everyone in Bombay should have a struggle story. You are Amitabh Bachchan's son, and it takes you two years to make a debut. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> There's my life story for you. <laughs> they refuse to believe my truth as well, yeah. No, um, the, the only difference is I did not entirely go to all the producers. Okay. Office. Sometimes they came they to came my to father's. Well. It was a, a bit of both. Um, I was at that point um, working for my father's company as a production boy and as an assistant director. And um, that's when I was trying to get a job as an actor. And, and, and shockingly, which was should have been... Um, a reality check for me, which I, I obviously didn't let me didn't let it impact me as much as it should have, was most of them and all the ones that said no to me mm. uh, said it saying no, we don't want the responsibility of right. launching Amitabh Bachchan's son, because they realized what that would take, and uh, then suddenly you know one day, as a blessing, in walked Mr. J P Datta and uh, he had just made Border and he offered me a film and right. and I jumped at the opportunity because I you know I mean obviously it's J P Datta why would you not want to mm. work with him. But what happened after that is, it's just, you're like a kid in a candy store. I was just happy as an actor to be, to have a job, mm. to go out there and make movies. And guess what? I was enjoying it. Right. Uh, maybe some of the results I wasn't enjoying, but mm. the, by and large, the process was, right. was, was wonderful. So I never really laid down and say, hey, what do I want out of my career? What do I want to achieve? How do I want to go about achieving it? I was... Just happy being an actor, getting a job and getting and to make getting movies. And getting your next film and your next. Absolutely. Right. So I needed to, to rethink that. Um, so these are the kind of things so that you, I did. So you constantly say this, Abhishek, that this version of you that we see is version 2.0. Is it version 4.0? Is it a thing that you start thinking about, even from mortality point of view, legacy point of view, when you're like 40 plus, I'm like, boss, can't continue like this forever. Is the, is, could age have a factor, be a factor in this? I'm sure it could. It wasn't for me. Okay. Who's 40? Me? Huh? No, I, you're, you're 25. No, I'm 42. <laughs> um, but it's how old you feel, you know. I'm, um, 
No, age really wasn't a thing. No? But I think maybe, having a maybe time spent uh, being a professional is. Sure. You know, after a point, you start evaluating your life and you say, hey, you know, what do I stand for? What am I going to be remembered as? Mm. And these are important questions. I think for me, it was more after the birth of my daughter right. um, that I started asking myself these questions. That you want to leave behind a legacy. Absolutely. Enough of houseful threes. And fours and fives. No, no, I love that. I can't wait I'm to sure. do. Uh, uh, but nobody's gonna five. remember those films. I mean, I'm sure they will. You just did. Huh? You just did. Well, I didn't have a choice. I was just reading up on what's the last film that you did before Manmarsia, which I think people will remember. Well, thank you. That's the intention. Right. It's it's it, like I said. It's not. Um, it wasn't the kind of films I was doing. If you ask me today. You might not agree with it because mm. I know your personal choice, but I'd do another houseful. I'd love to do another Happy New Year. I'd readily do a Bol Bachchan. I grew up watching Manmohan Desai and Prakash mm. Mehra. They're my favorite filmmakers. I'd love to do the kind of stuff. And these are films that, you know, um, the audiences love. Mm. Uh, I agree. They're made for a specific kind of an audience. Right. It's a kind of a, it's a genre of cinema, which is leave your brains at home and just come mm. entertain yourself. And there's a huge market for it. Because right. if there wasn't, they wouldn't be doing the kind of business that they do. Mm. I mean, till date, I, I mean, uh, I, I walk into places and people come up and say, you know, hey, Nandu Bide, or, you know, we mm. loved you in Houseful. Or they'll come up to you and say, oh, we loved you in Dhoom and Jai Dikshit. So you can't discount that. Um, so I love that kind of cinema. I can't wait to do it again. Uh, coupled with other work that inspires me as right. well. But like I said, for me, it was more about how I was doing that kind of film. It wasn't like, okay, if you're going to stand there, then you need to make a difference. You need to be able to say something. You need to be able to do something. You need people to turn around and hopefully, you know, come back here and sit in front of you and get you to give as glowing a response to a houseful that you have, say, for Manmarzia. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, so, so that's 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 part of the goal. You right. can't just write off stuff and say, "Oh, my uncle didn't like it, so that's fine." No, no, of course. No, not. I want you to like it, so I'm going to work hard enough so that. Did did it happen in, in the early part of your career, especially Abhishek, when you did certain films and you thought you'd done a great job in those films, and perhaps people hadn't watched it and you felt even worse about it? I'll give an example, okay? And of course, you should you'll come up with far more examples. Like one of my favorite performances of yours is a film called Run, yeah. right? And there's this scene where you're in a subway. Yeah. And so there, are, just to let the audience know, there are a bunch of goons and the hero is right there facing the bunch of goons and he turns around and he starts running. So you think, Are you a type of hero? he's running. But he's actually running to catch the shutter to pull it down so no one else runs away and then he whacks the shit out of everyone. I don't know how many people saw that, but that was a fantastic performance. That was the reason I did the film. Right. <laughs> so, oh, was that the scene? Yeah. So, um, Run was a Tamil film, which was, um, which Maddie had acted in. Mm. And Maddie, uh, Madhavan is a, is a dear friend of mine. Mm. And I had agreed to do it because, um, it's actually, it's a very cool story. Mm. Uh, Mr. Boni Kapoor wanted to produce the film. And he said, look, come watch this film. I said, okay. So, I went to see it in... A, um, a trial room that we have called Ketnav, which is mm. in Bandra. And I went and sat there. I remember Sri Deviji, the late Sri Deviji was sitting next to me. I'm a huge fan of hers, okay? I used to go hang out on the sets of Khudagava just to watch her. Mm. And she was sitting next to me and she's always been so lovely to me and she had always encouraged me and she had loved this film I'd done called Tera Jadu Chal Gaya. Mm. I think she was the only person who... who no, who, that's not yeah, true, but, that's not but, true. But, but yeah, there thank you. you. Yeah. Were you born? <laughs> huh? So... Um, so I was sitting next to her and I was just, you know, I'm sitting next to Sri Devi. I was like, wow. And suddenly, I, I, did, I wasn't even paying attention to the film. But suddenly when that scene came, mm. for me, that was my ode to my father, actually. Because mm. that scene reminded right. me of a scene in Divar. Right. And I said, I'm doing this film. And then when I reached the set, I remember that, oh God, I have only, only remember one scene. I don't even remember what the film was about. But that was the reason I did did that film and uh, that film actually got a great response. That's still one of the films that, you know, on, on Twitter till date, people still say that they liked it. So a few people saw it. But you know, every film has its own uh, destiny, I believe. Mm. Um, so yeah. Are there any others you can remember which, I, I'm, I mean the early part of your career where you felt like you'd given your best but I don't think the audience came and they should have? No. Um, None? The, the one truth which us actors very seldom own up to is when you see your film, which you do before the audience does, you know whether it's going to work or not. Really? Yeah. 
you know whether you've given your best because you know the amount of effort you've put in whilst filming it. So you realize that. It's after that, it's, you know, hope is a very dangerous thing. You just mm. hope it clicks. Mm. But you know the truth. I've, um, very honestly, I've done some 60-odd films now. Right. I've been wrong just about one of them. I've, I knew, I mean, I could sit in the trial and be like, uh-oh, another one bites the dust. Really? Yeah. Because of the way I worked in it. Not as an entire, I mean, sure. I, I, I can't comment on other people's work. But I knew, and I, I'm one of those people who believes that if your work is that good, the film will work. Um, so I knew each and so every So which one. was this one that you were wrong about? Joom Barabar Joom. Are. Yeah, I loved doing Joom Barabar Joom. I had such a blast. Um, it was great music. Shah and I were collaborating after Banti or Bubbly. We had a blast making the film. That movie you need drugs for. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> say no to drugs, man. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was just wonderful. And when I saw the screening of it, all of us were watching it together and we had a blast watching it. But then when the film didn't end up doing the kind of business I thought it did, it, it kind of threw me off. Did but then I realized why yeah. it didn't. And I did you actually go with coins to the screening? Yes. You actually throwing them? Uh, when my dad comes on, yeah. Because I'd done that in Banti or Bubbly as well. Okay. Shahad and I are big Amitabh Bachchan fans. Mm. So um, in, in Banti or Bubbly, when his introduction happens, we actually went to uh, Getty Galaxy and threw money. Like, you won't get recognized in Getty Galaxy? Oh, if you run down the aisle really fast and throw money and run out again, <laughs> really? you're fine. <laughs> And then you meet the ticket collector who says, Mera screen mat pharo tum. Says, okay, sorry, sorry. And then you, yeah. So we did that in Joom Barabar Joom. He did a song in that. Mm -hmm. And um, so we did that, yeah. But that was the one film which didn't do what I expected it to do. It didn't do badly, actually. But um, not what I expected it to do. That was the only one. The others you've seen and you know. Yeah. I think what went wrong with Joom Barabar Joom is there was a problem in relatability. Uh, I mean, you said it. You said uh, you wanted to take drugs and watch it. It's because I think the characters were very were a bit too eccentric and flamboyant. Mm. Uh, secondly, also what happens in our... In, if you compare it to his last film, which was Banti or Bubbly, mm. the best part about Banti or Bubbly... Have you all seen this movie called Banti or Bubbly? Okay. Hey, stop being so modest. Have you guys seen the movie called it's important Banti or Bubbly? It's one of the biggest hits of that year. Yeah, but... They all just look, in case you're yeah, sitting in, in case, some yeah. other country. So... Um, the relatability of Rakesh and Vimy mm. is that these small town kids who have stars in their eyes and want to make it big, that's, you know, it was aspirational. Mm. It was every small town kid's dream to grow up and go to Bombay. That was the big thing. Mm. So it's, there's that aspiration, there's that relatability. Right. Now in India, hamare rishtidar foreign mein rehte hain. Mm. It's a big deal. Hounslow mein, das jan, ek kamre mein, din raat, you know, they're stuck somewhere, wo problem nahi hai. how they live in foreign mein right. vilayat mein rehte hai. It's a very big thing. So now when you've already showing a film about people who are living abroad, they're already aspirational. So we want to see the Raichans right. of K3G. Hmm. You don't want to know what their normal problems are. Ek to tum log vilayat mein reh rahe ho. I don't want to know what your problem is and you'll, I don't care about your problems unless you're showing me an aspirational hmm. life. So I think they just disconnected from it. To add to it, the characters were very zany, very out there. Mm. So they've just switched off from it. And they're like, this is a trip we don't want to be on. But I said the drugs part because there's that song where the strobe lights are on. Yeah. And in the theater, it's really, really trippy. Yeah. Kiss of Love, I think that's called. Right. That was Bobby and Pretty. Because it's like a dark hall. And yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that yeah. in any film in a theater. But that's Shad, you know. Shad right. has, has a very visual sense of cinema. And he, he, mm. he, he, he can be very eccentric if he wants to. But um, yeah, that was the only film that right. I went wrong so on. So did Joom Barabar Joom in that sense start out actually being an India story and then became this? That yep. the two people actually meet? So when, when, when we were doing Banti or Babli is when Shahad narrated um, a, a film called Sangam Mail, mm. which is what Joom Barabar Joom became. Right. Which is a story of two kids who had run away and meet in Nizamuddin station. Right. And then make up these stories because they're actually scared and just to make a companion and find out that they're following, falling in love. Mm. So it started as that. Mm. But then Adi felt that it was becoming a bit too similar to, um, to Banti or Bubbly. Mm. And um, then he recast the film and then he said, um, and then in, instead of Rani and me, then became Preeti and myself. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, Rani is the one who suggested to Adi that, you know, why don't you base this in, uh, in London? Because Shah had never traveled outside India. <laughs> so, so, so Adi felt that with Shah's visual sense, he'd right. shoot that in a, in a very trippy way. Mm. But I think that's where we went wrong. We kind of lost the, the roots of the film. 
I think one of the things that people may not know about you, and I only recently learned, is that you have a notebook, and you actually watch every film of yours, and you review your performance almost like a reviewer would. Is that true? Yes. I wish I could just ask you to carry your notebook. It would have been fantastic. No, 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 no. no. Terrible handwriting. <laughs> Are you terribly self-critical? Yes. Yeah. As you should be. As you should. Be. Like I said, every actor knows. You know, at the end of the day, they know whether they've done a good job. Uh, whether they can do better. Uh, yes, when you do go back and review, um, like last night I saw Ashu's film, Kheli Hamji Jaan Se, mm. you, you, you start growing as an actor. So I think part of the exercise of when you can look back at your work and find faults, in a sense is reassuring because that means you're already evolved a bit more than when you were doing the film. And I, and I like to review my films regularly because I make notes as to how I could have improved that performance or what I need to be careful of. So are you only looking at yourself or are you looking at the film in totality? Uh, of, in the past couple of years, in, in totality. Okay. Before that, it was just myself. Right. I was still, I mean, at the start of my career, when I, I was still checking off some very basic things, which is why I've always said whenever I've been asked that, uh, you know, um, I don't think I was prepared when I started becoming an actor. I, I, I mean, I see some of my colleagues, that they were fully prepared. I mm. was just, oh, I got a job, yay, let's go. Mm. Um, I mean, at the start of my career, I was still, you know, is my hairstyle correct? Is my left profile good? Is my right profile good? You know, very okay. basics of film acting. I was still figuring that stuff out. Now I managed to see it as an entire. And you also look at every review that's, you know, that's been written around. I don't know, now of course, it will be impossible for you to, because there are millions of them, if you include social media too, and that you actually read what people have said about your performance. Is that true? Yes. Each one. As many as I can. As many as you can. Yeah. Uh, when I started my career, I used to actually put up, I had a few of yours up there as well, <laughs> um, on my bathroom mirror, and I used to highlight the portions that, you know, the critiques had not liked about me personally. Right. And it was a kind of visual representation for me that from the first film to the latest film, mm. the highlighted section should, should reduce. Mm. So that was kind of like a thing of self-improvement. So, okay, they didn't like this, this, this. Next film, try and implement that to improve upon that. So I used to do that. Has there ever been a point where a reviewer is sitting right next to you and read a review to your face? Not that I can remember. Okay, we're going to do that right now. Okay. Is, is it your review? Yeah. One of yours, right? Yes. Oh, this should be fun. So background, okay, it's, it's obviously a very, very short excerpt, but the one that relates to you. Uh, background score is an indoor concert. Artwork aims at advertising photography alone. Farhan Akhtar has written the full dialogue. His company's produced the picture. Their recent credits include Luck by Chance, Honeymoon Travels Private Limited, Rock On, Karthik Calling Karthik, which is sad given no actor in Bollywood believes in the Autier theory more than Abhishek Bachchan does. If you've noticed, practically all his colossal creative failures, let alone their box office response, seem to have been directed by filmmakers most would otherwise trust. Shada Ali's Joom Barabar Joom, after Banti Babli, that we just discussed. Ashutosh, Ashutosh Gowarikar's Khele Hum Ji Jaan Se, after Jodha Akbar, 